like that. Just waiting to see if there's a few late people. I can't see anybody there at the moment. So. make a start. Uh, what I'm going to do here is, uh, as you can probably see, I've got four different versions of, uh, hopefully you can make it out from that, of that portrait. And um, I've had to put two of them up here because, well, it just isn't the space. What I'm going to do is uh, turn them into as you can see I've cut them into strips and I'm going to turn them into what I call a panatrake like an expanded portrait um, yeah uh, so today I won't be doing any printing technically speaking um, but what I will be doing is showing you something that these are all from gel plate prints using the various techniques that I've used in the previous tutorials this one's quite uh i if, if you've been sort of keeping an eye on my on this page uh over the last week i'm employing the same sort of uses here and in this one that i have been with the stiper stones landscapes that i've been doing this week that's quite it's quite a strict set of colors and it's using a biro and i went over this last week where you press into the biro uh, quite hard into the paper and then you get a it's not so much a, re a resist but like an emboss upon the plate if you're quite quick about pulling the um, the paper with the drawing onto it away this one's using the watercolour pencils I uh, watercolour crowns I think I think that one is two and that one's a mixture of cray watercolour crayons and oil pastels and wax crowns. In fact, I think they've, uh, this one hasn't got any of the, the resist technique, it's just got the me painting on it and the, the outline that I bring across from a previous drawing that basically is the superstructure to all of these. So, yeah, there won't be any actual technical printing, but and I've started it over here because I. Th don't think you want to see me stretching across every time I, I put a piece across here so basically it, it, I can keep it to with you know I'm not going to block the camera off with too much with me reaching across to work on expanding this across here um, I'm just using basic uh, well it's just basic adhes surface of adhesive is Bostic but I use Yuhu this one's quite a Evo stick impact that's really strong probably too strong uh, yeah and you'll be you'll be able to see me as I'm doing this I'll try to talk you through the processing because there really is no predicting how this turns out and you can you can run a dummy run of it where you set them up and you think you've got an idea of what it's doing but until you start sticking them down flat next to each other and as you can see they're all curling a little bit because they've all got different material they'll stick flat but it, it's a it's a it's it's very different once you start sticking them down then you really get to see the context so i'll make a start because i think i'm going to be here for a little while so obviously this one this strip here there is obviously from there so the next one I'm probably going to use from this one. I'm afraid I'm going to have to glue it off screen because there just isn't the spice. So I've been doing this for a little while and uh, it, it definitely stems from my time in a print studio when I was in uh, college many moons ago. 
uh, which was really the only time that I suppose I had a pr proper print studio made available uh, for me at any given time. And um, it's registering an image, basically. Sorry, I'm going to get straight in the way now after saying I wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay, so I've got it to start with, and I apologise for starting it beforehand, but all I simply did was have a, a right angle marked out here, and then I stick the first piece, what I decide is the first strip down, using the glue, obviously, and then I just butt all the other ones up against the next one because they're all parallel lines quite a simple process I mean I've, I've taken it to different places now where it gets quite complicated right it seems a bit of a natural now I think this one next and as I'm working across it I'm now I'm getting into the the features of the the portrait it becomes important to. the reason that I did this bit first is because there's not a lot of context you can see the beginnings of the side of the of the portrait but it's a very ambiguous line from each one to the next and that's with intention but as the features of the portrait come into it then yeah it's yeah it's important that that's the context I've played it a few times where I've tried to stick within the confines of like guidelines and things that I've set down as as parallels or um, points where things should tessellate almost in a sort of clinical fashion. It's best not to stick with that. It's best just to let the picture inform you as ever. <laughs> and uh, if you need to make minor adjustments, make minor adjustments. So yeah, you can see how each one, if you look, like that matches its last piece that it was in there. I mean, it doesn't, they're not always gonna do that, but by and large, you do get that. Okay, just make sure that's nice and flush against there. Okay, and then what I try to, you can see how this, like the gap between the beginning of the eyelid is starting to emerge in the image. What I want to do is, what, when I'm choosing which piece, it'll probably be this piece next, because I've sort of over-calculated for that. And the reason I think that I over-calculate is there's less of that than there is on that. But again, this is the ambiguity of this, part of the face until I get into where the features are which is obviously how we read faces so you get a much more once you've got more details on it you've got a much closer you, you've got more, more room to play with obviously the less detailed aspect of the poultry if that makes sense You can see some of the lines already that are hopefully sort of translating through in each one of the images but it becomes like an echo. Right. Fit that. See that fits quite nicely onto there now. I was meant to do it that way, right? Always check. I try to check it beforehand and have a rough idea. And cast what I can to memory to make it work. Yeah, hopefully I can get this all done within an hour. That would be great be the first time I've done that with any of these. Let's see what happens when I change this. Is that better for the lighting? Can you see a better picture of what's going on there? 
It almost looks pitch black when I'm working with the lights. It's like switching the lights off. Uh, right, okay. So now we are getting into the eyelid. I think that bit. Must have cut this one quite considerably smaller than the others. It's not a big deal. Right, now you can see there's sort of continuities that are coming through all the way through it now because there's more detail emerging. So obviously my mark making, when I'm building the image as an individual image, it sort of accentuates the, the, the continuities of that, I suppose, like I say, an echo. Okay, what I'm also, uh, I should probably, I mean, it is literally just spatulating on the, the glue. I use, um, that's like a corner piece out of a stretcher, uh, yeah, for a stretcher bars for when I stretch canvases. And you put that into place to hold the stretcher bars in place, it gives added security. That's a plastic one, plastic one seems to work better. Because when the glue dries, you can just put pick it clean off. But just to give you an idea, most of you, anyone who's worked in canvas, will have it. Either wooden ones or plastic ones. And that's yeah, that's that's the the length and breadth of the uh, of the tools I'm using today. <laughs> that is, they're not very complicated today. Yeah, in, so in the interest of time, I'm sort of, I'm winging a lot of this. Usually what I would do if I had uh, more time to play with him, I would, well, I'd do several mock-ups and then take notes. Each one of them is labelled with a number and a letter. The letters, the, um, the different version so there's A, B, C and D and then the number tells me which piece so just in case I lose track it is within that version it definitely helps to label them I've learnt that the hard way it's something you can easily forget to do but I wouldn't <laughs> okay right that was from that one, that was from that one. I think I'm going to go with this one next. Probably should have put that there anyway, but... Like I say, I'm wigging it a little bit here. Well, a lot. paper I'm using it's it's always it's the same as I've used in pretty much I think all of these uh, demonstrations tutorials so far it's the Canton's mixed media 200 GSM for the, the what the prints are actually built on or printed onto built on poor turn the phrase that I wouldn't okay that one I'm gonna go with it seems obvious that that one should go next right you see the continuity coming across in the mark making now see it quite it should accentuate it a bit this this bit I reckon I'm getting around about to the halfway stage now
apply the deorder a bit. As you, you probably can work it out, but just in case, just to make it quite clear, I don't cut them all in the same place. Keeping it randomised with the thicknesses across the portrait when I cut them up really pays off. If you have any kind of pattern that you stick to, I've tried it before. I mean, if you're into patterns, maybe it'll work, but it, the repetition becomes too obvious. So if you cut them all at the same point on the same register, it's a bit, for me, it's a bit uniform. Uh, but, I mean, everybody's got a different aesthetic value, so it might work for you. But for me, it's, it's a bit uniform. So what I do is I cut them all up into... I think there's, I have one centimetre, which is what I've just uh, put on there. That's a one centimetre strip. And I have a 1.5, two centimetre, 2.5 and three centimetres. And yeah, just randomise them. And it's another reason to take notes on it as well. well not so much take notes, but to, uh, well, you probably would have to take notes in order to get that to work. but. Um, The more images, because you could do this ad infinitum, just keep compounding different versions of the same image in on top of each other. The more that you do that, the more that you need to pay attention to inadvertent patterns that you might be bringing up and repeating, because it, it will it get accentuated. And like I say, maybe that's what you're looking for. I don't think it works that well with this way of working, but... Okay. I've been wrong before. <laughs> I'm going to try another one in there because I think that's one that's ready to go. So yeah, this is another centimetre. too much glue on it's really easy to do it doesn't really need a lot if you're using like yuho or a solvent contact adhesive like i am you don't especially with little thin strips of paper you need enough obviously to so it's a permanent fi fixture but don't go wild it's also wasteful with the glue Processing. Usually that happens with every every strip that I put together. But as I said at the beginning, it is quite difficult to predict because you usually do get a bit of curl on the paper once you cut them into strips. Um, so when you try to so when you put them alongside each other, it's difficult to get a really clean fit one after the other. After in fact, it's as close as impossible as I think you can get. To be honest with you. <laughs> um, but that's, do not let that get in your way because it I mean the thing is with doing it like this it reveals the image you've got there is no I don't know anyone who I think I know could actually predict what these images do until you start putting them together and then yeah it gives you a well it's a different way of looking at things it is a yeah it's a different way of using repetition definitely uh, right I said that one next didn't I I think there's some continuity still going on in there. Yep. And it, another, I mean, I'm not going to get a chance there, but when uh, once this is finished and I go and take some, it'll probably be tomorrow that I take the still shots. Of it. But what I will also do is show you what happens when you take 
uh, photo at an acute angle looking down like the plane of the 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 image but from one end and then the other end because it, it plays a trick on perspective working like this it sort of inverts perspective especially with portraits which is part of the reason that I call them pano traits need to be careful to retain the integrity of that right let's move you across here spend a long time deliberating wake on social media for me and uh, uh, I think it's a lot to do with the um, the tutorials and uh, the demonstrations that I've been doing recently so I very much appreciate that definitely means it's worth continuing with for me is uh, important <laughs> to say the least. Uh, I like the way that one's broken uh, up a bit. That needed to happen. Okay, I'm going to go there with that one. Uh, that one up there. interesting watching what happens with the foreshortened side of the face. Because on this this side of the face that I've worked on with 
all of them so far building across to this point. That's really the, um, how do I put it, it's, it's the area of the face that gives me the most scope for getting playful, shall I say. And uh, foreshortened areas are always a nightmare. But if you get them right, they're, um, they can pay dividend big time. So we'll see. Also got. I'm not sure whether I'm going to put it at the end of this video or not, but I've got a, a bit of an offer that I'll probably make a video and post it later in the week when I've got it more concretized, shall we say? The, the business end of it. I'll put that one there. doing a, a bit of a course in the local area soon as well with um I would imagine again this isn't something that is very concrete at the moment uh, but I would imagine well I know it's going to be to do with printing it will probably be to do with the gel plate printing but as soon as I get the details on that nailed down I'll, uh, I'll obviously publicize them on on social media Oh yes, that's what I like that bit. That's definitely going in like that. It's good when that happens. But it's so it, you kind of get a, the, you know, how you get a reveal when you're doing print making, which is really quite different to. The sensation of painting because painting's revealing itself all the time to you and um, when you do a, a print there's a there's a blind sort of I don't know there's a risk element to it and that that's maintained in this as you, you have no real idea like I said how the, how the image is going to behave what it's going to do when you put it in context to itself replicated several times over they always do something you what you can't predict. <laughs> always. So you're probably thinking I'm being quite. I'm using how much information is on each of the strips. 
as it's sort of working from left to right across the image. So it's not, I mean, within some regard, I mean, there's probably points where I've missed it and I could have used it. And if, yeah, if I didn't have time constraints on me, then, uh, yeah, there would have been probably more uh, time for contemplation over it. And there's other ways of doing it, you don't have to do it in strips, I've found all sorts of ways of doing it. Um, I'm going to have a quick sweep of my teeth, sorry if you can... I keep being told I sound like the bloke out of Peaky Blinders. And I've never watched Peaky Blinders. <laughs> uh, right. Perhaps I should do some research on Peaky Blinders. This one's quite a crazy one. I should have seen that coming with all the wild colours with it, shouldn't I? Okay, right, we can start splitting these out a bit now. shortening sounds like a condition Contact adhesive seems to work. I mean, it depends on what sort of. I'm used to doing this with watercolour papers, uh, but I found that contact adhesives like um, Yuho, Bostic, the solvent adhesives basically, the ones you get high off of, <laughs> inhale too much, um, they work really well for this. And uh, I found that they work quite well for other media as well. Because it they're solvent, they 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 dissipate and dry pretty damn quickly, which is definitely helpful. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with that one uh See, that one's a bit out of place, but as long as I get in quickly about it.
that's what I mean about follow what the image is doing, not what the, the wall group says at all. Uh, right, and then I said I was going to go with there, the one. going to do some strange things when I photograph that from an oblique angle, I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> Hopefully good strange things and not bad strange things. Okay, that can stay where it is at the moment. I think it's you next, that's what I think. Bring a bit of water into it. Sometimes repeating uh, the same image or the same uh, and a strip from the same image within close proximity of the last one helps that continuity. This is what I mean. It's a different way of seeing. You start thinking about. I mean, for me, it's none of my images that I did before this look that finished because I can always think of, of, of ways of compounding and adjusting the imagery to to, to show the, the complexity that I can, you know, it's usually pretty evident in a person. <laughs> no matter how simple they try to be. Hmm. I think... I think, I think, it's going to be you next. Yeah, that seems to work quite well. Okay, that's quite a rare breed of colours. I've got to be honest, I hoped it would be a little more uh, cogent as an image. I mean, it might still hold together, and I... It amazes me how much better they look when I look back at them on what you're seeing on the camera as to... There's nothing worse than watching yourself back, is there?
quite often it's important to have one that's got a very contrasting background tone or hue. Quite what I quite often if if I've got I mean I've done this where I've used anything up to 25 different images uh, to compound the image or di 25 different versions of the same uh, image and then compounded them and what I usually use is the different background sort of image or a trick that you can use is to use drawing materials and then you uh, like pen or pencil and then you're left with a very yeah, it's that contradiction of the background that I, I knew that when I was uh, putting these, that was the last one I did, was this uh, the one that I'm sticking down now. And I knew I need something that contra, because they all the art, the one I knew the ones that I was going to use all had blue in the background, so I knew that was going to be quite dark, and I needed something light to just like the width of the sh the stripes is different it needs randomizing that's doing something very strange with the nose across there isn't it very odd imagine all the details starting to recede out the image now so I can be a lot less precious about how the um how the following pieces after these next two get put down and there's only what, half a dozen really left and maybe eight left to do show you one that uh, I did yesterday that was a very well I thought it was really bad luck to begin with and then I realized that I what I got again was two images and all I needed to do was I called it twin packed so I don't know whether you've seen that or not but I posted it yesterday on Facebook uh, and um, what I've done is pretty much the same process as that as I'm doing here to that and they were one image to begin with then things didn't go as I planned on the gel plate and a lot got left as like a residual it just didn't the paint either the paint was too dry or too wet and it just didn't take to the paper and so I was left with half of the portrait printed onto a piece of paper and the other half left on on the gel plate and it took me a couple of hours and then I realised, oh right, all I've got, really got to do here is um, is just lift the one on the gel plate out by reactivating the, um, the acrylic layers underneath. I did that by just adding white, titanium white uh, acrylic paint and then uh, it lifted out really well, it came out brilliantly and I put, the, put both of them up so you could see well it was just a it was a really good that's the sort of thing you can only get out of a gel plate really two versions of the same image and uh, I think it was Lucinda that was you're going to do a penetrate with that Josh and I was sort of, literally I think as she was writing that I must have been thinking the same thing must, uh, to myself like, ah, yeah and then as soon as I saw that I thought yeah that's what I've got to do with it that was just like the uh, confirmation of it so I do listen <laughs> right so yeah you can see here it's it's, it's random time with the there's no real detail on any of these strips so it's just a case of sticking them down and using them up basically I've, uh, I've exhausted my glue supply now I'm now through to the using the stuff that's too strong for the job really 
the uh, Evo stick impact uh, it really holds its place the stuff does it ain't like welding it to the surface but once it's on it ain't coming off which is really I suppose that's what I'm looking for at the end of the day don't use that one don't use that one this one, isn't it? No, it's not. I'm just going to use that one. Yeah. So I'm nearly there. So yeah, if you if you use it and uh, you you've got a use for this, fantastic. That's why I'm, that's why I'm doing these two tutorials. Um. If you come up with some, I want to see what you've done with it. Don't don't hide it under a. That's what not what I'm doing. I've come up with something quite innovative, and I'm I'm sharing it with people. So if you come up with something, uh, then I want to see it because it might lead to. That's why I'm putting it out there so I, so I can see your innovations and then they can spur me on to more innovations within my own work again. So. Don't hide it under a bushel. If he's not happy to post it on on social media, fair enough, I understand that. Um, but do send me over a photo of it. I'm, I'm interested to see what you've done. Well, I mean, drop me a line at any time anyway if you want to. I'll try to keep up to date with uh, speaking to people, but I mean, I do also spend an awful lot of time working as well on this stuff, so it's not immediate, but usually within like five or six hours I I sort of get back to people. Depends what I've got on that day really. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna go with you, uh, that's what I think. I mean at this point I could stop. There is, a, you know, I, I quite like the idea of finishing. That's got a lot of uh, tactile qualities to me. That 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 piece that's furthest over to the right right now, and I'll probably put that. I'm planning on putting that in last because there's I sort of overkilled it a little with the uh, contradiction in tone that I can use with the, like I said, the uh, the lighter background. self-explanatory now once we get it down to the last four. So something I'm also going to be doing um, is uh, at some point if uh, if you found any of this help I'm going to be asking, well not asking but I'm going to put a, the facility to make donations uh, a bit like um, Yeats makes does and, uh, it was him who sort of gave me the he said he i'm not comfortable I, I will carry on doing these for free i realize it's you know i've been in the position where uh it's really helpful when somebody's offering uh free advice with uh, um, free technique advice i'm not going to stop doing that uh, but if it's making you sales or you, you feel as though it's uh it's it's worthy of um a contribution no matter how big or small then what i'm going to do is put my paypal details but it can be as anonymous as you like as big as small as you like I'm not and you don't have to make a donation at all i'm not asking at all i'm not I'm not that way inclined but what i am going to do is for people who make a donation over 30 pounds is i will send out a handmade little print like this there those are from the um the Stiper Stones. That one's a bit abstract, I grant you, uh, but the others aren't. They're versions taken from details of uh, the the drawings and plates that I've uh, posted on already on Facebook. And anyone who makes a donation of thirty or over, I'll send that out to you. Won't be any postage cost. That'll be part of the part of the donation. 
and it means I can make better videos. I, I, I'm doing this on quite, this is literally on a webcam, a really, really cheap webcam and I would, it would be great if I could get a hold of some uh, better studio equipment, better microphones. And then you could hear my terrible accent more clearly. <laughs> do a whole verse, do a whole episode as Peaky Blinders. See if I can uh, cross fuse what I do with Peaky Blinders. It's probably not a good idea, even though I've not watched it. I'm, I get the impression it's quite a. I keep confusing it with the other thing that um, Tom Hardy's been in. I don't even know if Tom Hardy is in Peaky Blinders, but. Is it taboo? Same sort of time period. I haven't watched that either. Right, so, there you go. I'm gonna call it a day on that. There you go. It's an interesting one. I, I, I've gotta be honest, I didn't like this as it was happening, but now it's got this over here kind of puts a stop on it and I like that twisting motion that's going through and it, it is sort of it's a part of the reason that I chose this particular image upon looking back I mean there's nothing to stop me working onto this image over the top of it it's not something that I've done with any of them in the past but yeah there's things that I'm not going to go into a big crit of my own work but I can already see things that I would as ever, yeah, be my own worst enemy, but I don't really see it as, it's just their ideas. The only bit that's difficult about it is having to actually act upon it, or disregard it. Um, so yeah, that's that's a palette, right? That's an interesting one, that is. One of the things that, you know, makes them operate, and I've heard people say to me, why don't you just use um, uh, Zickley prints to do this, which is a fair enough argument. But what you don't get, and it's difficult to convey with the camera, is the tactile differences, even with something like this. Like I said, some of them are based on uh, oil pastel, some of them are wax crayon resist, some of them are using like an embossing technique, some of them are painted over the top of, some of them I haven't, some of them have got oil pastel over the top of them. And I don't know whether that's see what happens when I adjust the lighting across it. Whoops. How's that look to you? Is that making any sense to you folks? I'll get some photos of it. I think you're getting the idea with it. I'll get some photos of it uh, as a still image tomorrow and um, post them. I'll also obviously repost this video on uh, YouTube as well because that's been quite a hit this week doing uh, the videos on YouTube. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do next week but I'll do something. I'll be back here to do it uh, again next week and uh, I don't know whether it'll be gel plate. You'll have to keep an eye on uh, it. At some point I'm going to do other things other than gel plate but I say that most weeks don't I and then I find a yeah uh, another approach to gel plate printing that I can use within what I do and yeah I can uh, I can go off down a tangent with that so yeah I might yet yeah, find a tangent to disappear down in the interim okay thanks a lot for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you next week sometime Bye.